62 degrees as the Giants take the field. The winds right around where they usually are, and uh, it's breezy. But that's kind of the definition of baseball in Northern California. Breezy. Let's take a look at David Bell's lineup. It'll be India Solano, the former Giants, and then Tommy Van, the veteran Joey Votto, followed by Kyle Farmer, the former Dodger. Then it's Mustakas, Elmora Jr., Zenzel, and then the former Giant, Aramis Garcia. He'll do the catching and hit ninth. On the mound tonight for the Giants will be the right-handed veteran Alex Cobb. They can start number 10. He's 3 and 2 on the year with a 5.62 ERA. He's 34 years of age. And he is in his 11th year at the big league level. 6'1, 207 pounder. Let's take a look at our Statcast 3D powered by Google Cloud as to how he goes about his business. He will sink and force the fastball. Uh, most of the time you're going to see the sinker, and uh, it's a healthy velocity. Uh, averaging over 94 miles per hour. He's got a split and a knuckle curveball. And the split really has been the one that he has been uh, most familiar with throughout the, the early part of the season. However, when he gets that knuckle curve going, he will ride it. For Cobb, lifetime against the Cincinnati Reds. He's 2 0 with a 1 8 0 ERA. Take a look at the Giants defense is brought to you by your Bay Area GMC dealers starting in the outfield from left to right. It'll be rough. Mike Yastrzemski, Doc Pe Jock Peterson, and uh, the best arm is uh, really in center field. And for the Giants in the infield will be Crawford and Longoria on the left side, Walton and Bell on the right side, and Kirk Casale. He'll be in the squad putting down the signs. Yeah, I just realized, Mike, that these 715 starts. Voted on by the hitters, a perfect time to start a game. <laughs> you don't have to worry about shine in the outfield, no, no shadows. First pitch of the ball game is hit out to right field, and Jock Peterson is battling the sun, and he makes the catch, and that's how this game gets started. Batting second, third baseman, number seven, Donovan Solano. So the former Giant gets a nice round of applause. Not only was he a good giant, but he was a good guy. Hey, he really was. And uh, just has dealt with some injuries to his knee. He's just now starting to get going. Yeah, it happened in spring training. So here he is. And he takes a strike. By the way, Andy Fletcher is the home plate umpire. Welke, Seya, and Morales from first to third. Foul back. If I say Solano's hitting 500, that, that probably doesn't do a whole lot of good. He's four for eight on the season, and this is just his third game. Talking about Andy Fletcher, the plate umpire. It's a pretty consistent zone. It's it's tight. It gets more low calls than high calls, and every once in a while you'll see a high call, and you you wonder where the heck that was. But for the most part, he's a pretty good umpire. And he just got a piece as it squirts through the legs of Kurt Casale. By the way, it's nice sitting next to you again. It's been a while. It felt like we've been away from this game for over a month yeah. when it was just a week. Actually, I thought it was more like years. <laughs> the altitude will do things to you. Tommy Pham to follow. And the 0-2. Foul. One thing we learned about Donovan Solano when he was with the Giants, a very good high ball hitter. Anything up above the belt, and I don't care what you have on it. I don't care if you're throwing 103, he can turn it around. I don't care if he's if it's a changeup. Anything that's belt high and above, he is going to wear you out. You've got to keep the ball down to him. He can hit. He can hit. Donnie Barrels. He's one for three in three at bats against Alex Cobb. And he got him with a high fastball at 96. Here's Tommy Pham. Number 28, Tommy Pham. Tommy Pham, the Giants have seen and 
participated against him when he's been on other teams. And it doesn't really take much for him to get motivated. No, those boos are going to play right into his game. Absolutely. And he takes a high fastball, one ball and no strikes. He's having a good year. Ten home runs, 29 driven in. It's a healthy swing and a miss. He's never faced Alex Cobb before. And you can see he's hot right now. So two balls and one strike. You watch Alex Cobb and, and you're impressed with the movement that he has on everything. Two and two. And he will throw everything that he has in any count. Against Fam, the Giants play a pretty conservative set, both in the outfield and in the de uh, infield defense. I mean, that's <laughs> almost like where Abner Doubleday put everybody. Cobb wanted it, and it's three and two. Trying to wrap around that outside corner with a backdoor sinker. And really. What he was reacting to is where the ball was caught. I mean, he threw, I don't think Casale even hardly had to move the glove. Tap foul will do it again. You have a catcher sit up on that outside corner and lay his glove right on the outside corner, and he doesn't move his glove. You're thinking that's a strike. Joey Votto to follow. The Reds come in 23 and 46. They're in last place in the NL Central. On the ground to Belt. Belt will throw to Cobb, covering, and that'll end the inning. Nice inning for Alex Cobb, and he gets a workout. Giants are coming up. Let's take a look at the Giants lineup. It's brought to you by Bigelow T. Listella, the DH, he'll lead it off, followed by Yastrzemski, Ruff, and then Jock Peterson. 15 home runs against the right handing pitching this season. Belt, Longoria, and Crawford welcome back Donovan Walton in the lineup, and then it's Kurt Casale hitting ninth. On the hill tonight for the Cincinnati Reds will be the right hander Graham Ashcraft. He's a rookie, 24 years of age, 6'2, 240 pounder, out of Huntsville, Alabama. This is what he has done in six starts, three and one. With a 3-5-1 ERA, his first big league win was against the Giants in Cincinnati when he went six of the third innings for his baseball. And you say, well, how does he do it? Let's take a look at our StatCast 3D powered by Google Cloud. He's got a fastball that has a natural cut to it. It's a fastball that's a healthy velocity. It's high 90s. He's got a slider sink, a sinker and a changeup. But when he gets that fastball going, he can ride that by itself. It's just a natural little three-inch slide that runs away from a righty into a lefty. His slider is his primary secondary pitch. If that makes sense. His primary secondary. Got it. Okay. I got it. I got it. Here's Listella hitting 267. Overshift is on. And he takes just a simple little 98 down low. One ball and no strikes. With Flip it up there, kid. Yeah, with movement. And I mean, when the Giants saw him at Cincinnati, they didn't have a lot of loud contact against him in six and a third innings, just four hits, no runs. Two balls and no strikes. It's a 98 mile an hour two seam fastball. Movement that runs away from the lefty is going to be a two seamer. Movement that runs into a lefty is going to be a four seamer. Away, inside, lots of movement on the fastball. There's a strike. Took a little off. 99. <laughs> and, and he doesn't do anything other than grip at the foreseen grip. It's just a gift of nature. Two and two. See a hitter break down mid swing and a 2 1 count. It's late movement. 
that will make you step out and have a conversation with yourself and also make you choke up a little bit. Yeah. So 0 2 to 2 2. Out of play. Take a look at the Reds defense. It's brought to you by your Bay Area GMC dealer starting the outfield from left to right. It'll be Pham, Sinzel, and Almora Jr. Almora with the best arm. Farmer, Solano on the left side, India, and Votto on the right side, and Garcia, Armas Garcia, former giant, will be in the squad putting down the signs. Pulled on the ground to India, and he'll make the play. For one out. And here's Jastrzemski. He has his numbers. He's at 250. Went 0 for 5 yesterday with four strikeouts. So he got that one out of the way before the Giants came home. Yeah, get rid of those on the road. Yeah. Follows this one. He's three for his last 29. So hey, you hit a dry spell. I said a couple guys in their lineup have hit on dry spells. I mean, Ostrimski and Longoria, they 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 need to get it going. Well, they called high. It was a pretty good pitch. It's one ball and one strike. Yeah, you see more low gifts than high gifts from Andy Fletcher, the plate umpire. Another defense where it's an overshift. Tapped off the end of the bat, foul, and it's one and two. The road trip for the Giants, they win three and four. The the sad part is if they win one of the two games that they should have won in Atlanta, all of a sudden it ends up being a pretty good trip. But that losing those two games on walk-offs made it a three and four trip. There's a swing you're gonna miss. Well, let's check out the wind conditions here at Oracle Park tonight. And like we always see, there is wind that comes in towards home plate low, and then it turns around and it goes out high with most of the carry going out to left center. Pretty standard. Yeah, but the key there is high. Yeah, you get a ball up, you're going to get push. Hit a ball on the ground. <laughs> Here's rough. Ruff takes a strike. Hitting 229 with six home runs, 24 driven in. In that series in Cincinnati, Ruff did not get an at bat against Ashcraft. It's one ball and one strike. There's a slider, and it's got a big tilt. He's got a, a little bit higher than a three quarter release on his delivery, which would give you some tilt on your breaking balls. A little more severe than what guys are used to. One and two. Red staff coming into tonight's ballgame. They rank last in the National League with a team ERA of 5.38. Yeah, but not this guy. No. That'll end the inning with a high fastball at 100 miles per hour. Votto. He will lead things off. Great motto. Here's Joey Votto hitting an unusual 209. And Votto takes a breaking ball for a strike. Votto is a 299 lifetime hitter. And he started out his career in 2007. She's feeling it. Hey, it's Friday night. Yeah, anytime you can incorporate the big fist. I agree. The big fist is a hit. Makes me smile every time I see it. I know, but. You sent me a picture right after you got one of those drinking your coffee. Made me laugh. Yeah, it works. 
<laughs> Keeps hot things hot, cold things cold. You talk about leading the league in attitude right there. Yep. One and two to Votto. Two for ten lifetime against Alex Cobb. Got him. Well, well, soccer is back at the ballpark at Oracle Park. It's a must see match next month. Real Madrid against Club America. SFGiants.com slash soccer. Here's Kyle Farmer. Farmer hitting 286. Five home runs, 38 driven in. When we first saw Kyle Farmer, he was a catcher with the Dodgers. And when he started playing short, I was like, well, what are the Reds doing? And it turns out he's a pretty good shortstop. He's a real good shortstop. I mean, he's one of those guys when organizations say, we're going to pick the best athlete, and he's one of those guys. Hits it to the Giants shortstop, and his throw is high. And Farmer, who recognized Belt was going to be off the bag and in the air, slides in head first. And that could be a hit. I think they just ruled it an error. You can see that if it's a more accurate throw, they got it by a bunch. There's Here's the Mustakas. There's that slide, the head first slide you're talking about. Did they say base hit? Yeah. Okay. Tough way to lose a no hitter. <laughs> Indeed, there's a strike to Mustakas. Mustakas has got a little bit of ownage on Alex Cobb. Five for 15, a double and a home run. Slowly hit and it's going to kick foul. Mustakas was part of that Kansas City Royals lineup in the 2014 World Series. I'll never forget there was a guy in the Kansas City Royals at the ballpark, a Kansas City Royals fan, had on a Mustakas jersey and he had the biggest pair of moose horns I've ever seen in my life. No, that was during the World Series? Yeah. I mean the moose antlers were literally as, as big as he each one he had two of them. And they got him. No. The home plate umpire. He called it off. Let's take a look at the split finger fastball just caught a piece. Yeah that's a tough one right there. Right, does he catch the ball. I mean, I think he does, but it's a tough call. Hey, that's not reviewable. But I think it was should have been a strikeout. You foul the ball off, you catch it without it hitting the ground, you're out. But you're right, it was a tough call. The Dodgers beat the Braves. That game just ended at a 4 1 final. Freddie Freeman got his World Series ring. Had to be an emotional return yeah, to Atlanta. I think it was. Freddie Freeman. All right, hit into the gap. And Yastrzemski cannot cut it off. That's going to allow Farmer to score. And as we like to say, ownage is ownage. It's 1 0. All Mustakas is looking for is a little elevation, and this is right out over the plate on a tee. And in a two strike count, he rifles a line drive. No chance for Yastrzemski to cut it off. And once it finds its way to the ball, an easy score for Farmer from first. Just a flat power stroke from Mustakas. 
Here's Elmora Jr. And the first pitch is down low. 286 with five home runs. 22 driven in. Cobb bent over, looks into Kurt Casale. Mustakas at second. There's a strike. Giants play a conservative defense against Albert Almora Jr. Pretty straight up in the outfield. Just a little bit of pull on the right side of the infield. It's Foul. Sad. Look at that play. It's our ball dude down there, Lewis Berlin. He is the man. All right, here we go. Short hop. All right, I got it. I got it. Yeah, he kind of washed it into his glove. I mean, kind of. Swing and a foul. I can't call him the man. You got to watch it into your glove if you're going to be the man. But he made a play. Now he's fired up. He wants another opportunity. Well, his nickname is the Beast. <laughs> Remember the Beast? Remember, you can't nickname yourself. Right? He, he had the Beast pose. Remember the Beast with the Reds? Swing and a miss. To Sally with a nice block in the out at first. Now, word via WebEx by Cisco. Hello, everyone. Whether it's from boardrooms, Crowded rooms. Claro que sí. And soon from rooms you aren't even in. T-Mobile uses WebEx to hybrid work. Hey, hon. Because we make it work for everyone. Nick Zenzel will hit with two outs. Yastrzemski. Very deep in center field. And the pitch is down low. There you see the defense. Giving the lines, taking away the gap in right center. And that's a fair ball. And it'll be 2 0. Zenzel, who runs well. Easily into second. Right down the third base line. Two seam fastball drops right above the knee inside corner. And Sinzel just spins on it. Longoria never had a chance. I mean, this is a big, big hit for the Reds. I mean, this is your number eight hitter first time through coming up with a two out RBI. And those hurt. So here's the former giant swinging and a miss. Ramos Garcia doing the catching tonight. He's got power. Don't let that one home run in the home run call him fool you. He's got a legitimate pop. Kind of in the story for Alex Cobb, the infield hit. Well, or a ball could have been a strikeout too. Yeah, with Mustakas. He lives to see another strike, and he hits a double and knocks in a run. It's a bad break. There's a strike to make it one and two. Reds on the board first.
Slowly hit. Tough play for Crawford. He'll barehand it and throw. And here comes Belt to throw home. And they got him. For now. Sinzel signaled to the Reds bench immediately, like, check it. I'm safe. So the Reds are going to look at it. Belt, who is a good thrower. Throws a perfect strike to Casale, who swipe tags. Grab some pine meat. That'll end the inning. Reds on the board twice. Giants are coming up. It was a home run yesterday in Atlanta against his old teammate, Kenley Jansen. Shoots this one up the middle. Farmer on the back end, and Vada will dig it out. Nice play. Both ends. Play by Farmer, the dig them out by Joey Vado. Cross body, a little bit low in the dirt, not a problem for Joey Vado. Yeah, he's good over there. Two good. Defensive first baseman in this game. Belt's throw was awesome. Yeah, it was. One of the best first baseman arms in the National League, Brandon Belt. Belt out of play, 98, right down the pipe, and it's no balls in one strike. Brandon Belt's out of the University of Texas, and he pitched. He did, and he'd like to pitch if they get in one of those position player games. But he doesn't want to throw lollipops up. No. There. He wants to pitch. Oh and two. All oh, right, hey. Pass it around, and the kid with the popcorn said, "That's a good little brother right there." Don't bother me. They could be twins. They could be. And tight to belt. Longoria on deck. Two and two. You just take a look at the accuracy of the throw from Brandon Bell. That's a right on the third base side. It's a little high, but it gives. Casale, plenty of time to drop a knee and swipe and swipe a tag. And they say belt went around. Well, save like a closer with Xfinity's all new three for one bundle. Get unlimited internet and streaming. When you add Xfinity Mobile, learn more at Xfinity.com slash three for one. Here's Longoria. Longo hitting 225 with five home runs, 12 driven in. And he takes the first pitch high, 1 0. Out of play to even the count. Hey. Johnny Bench. How'd you do against Johnny Bench? Good. Did you? Yeah. I'm saying you just did good against that whole lineup. No. no Joe Morgan wore me out. Down the right field line. Elmora. Will kick it around, and Longoria stops with a single. Yeah, that's what the Giants want to see. They want to see Longoria get hot, and when he gets hot, he hits a lot of balls to right field. And this is now a five-game hitting streak for him, but he was coming out of a little cold spell. 
Now he's starting to heat up. Nice at bat. Inside out. Two for 25 bench against you. Yeah, he had a hard time with the curveball. Although one of those hits was a home run off a curveball in Cincinnati. Joe Morgan, 10 for 30. Two big flies. Yeah, Joe, Joe was rough on him. Pete Rose was rough on him. 0 oh 1 to Crawford. 0 oh 2 to Crawford. And there will always be Johnny Bench. Jerseys were in. I don't, I don't care. The Reds could play in Australia. Guys will be there in the stands having Johnny Bench jerseys. Well, he's the best catcher I ever played against, and he might be the best ever. I, I can't argue with that. I mean, he, he was the whole package. I mean, you're going to get some arguments from fans in New York with Yogi, and that's fine. He was about as good as you get as well. But Bench Reed defined the position. He became a one handed catcher. It's a Pete Rose fan. Me too. And Bench's arm was incredible. And this one squirts away. And Longoria is going to jog into second. I think it may have hit Crawford. It did. So a dead ball. And now all of a sudden a two out rally. <laughs> sure, maybe the back foot. Yep. Yeah. On the right toe. On the toe. If you, you have two sizes too big, then that's not going to hurt. But if your shoes are real tight, yeah, that's going to hurt. Like Crawford's, but he, he will. He never rubs anything. No. He will not give the, the pitcher the satisfaction of knowing that he caused him a little pain. Walton takes a strike. He went over two against Ashcraft. In Cincinnati. And overall, he's nine for 56. This has popped up and it should end the inning. And it does. Giant strand a pair, third inning coming up. Nothing India, who opened up the game with a Fly ball to right field. And the first pitch to India is down low. At the old Alameda. There's a swing and a miss. One ball and one strike. Good split. That is an old boat. I'll they, take it, Mike. Then they have to dry dock that thing and repaint it. Or at least the bottom half. I bet that thing's got a few stories to tell. Swing, gonna miss. One and two. So last year, India was the rookie of the year. You can see the the winners in that franchise. Proud franchise. On the ground, Longoria on the backhand. His throw in time. Nice play for Longoria. One out. I mean, it's such a, a typical play for Longoria with relaxed hands and the relaxed throw. Meanwhile, the uh, beer can regatta on Friday night. Nothing relaxed about that. <laughs> <I know. laughs> I tell you what, the, the, the land lover that I am, I'm I'm thinking we're tipping over. Yeah. Well, like right there. <laughs> Not with you. That's when they tack though. That mask comes swinging around, and you got to make sure it doesn't knock you into the water. Yeah, we wouldn't know about those things. I'm sitting on a tractor. Sorry. <laughs> it's fun though. Absolutely exhilarating. Swinging a foul from Solano off the end of the bat. And once sailing gets under your skin, well, it's kind of like riding a tractor. Can't get enough of it. Mm, I don't know. <laughs> Your dad 
Couldn't swim. That's all I need to say. <laughs> yep. He loved his tractor time. He did not like water. One ball and one strike. In tight, two and one. My dad had a rule when we were kids. When the temperature hits 96, we'll go to the lake. Well, he, he knew that the high for the summer was like 96. So, so it may have happened once. Never. Never. Well, not most summers. Here's it. A hit by pitch is Solano will hit on down to first. Let's see. Four kids looking at the thermometer at the same time when it's around 94. <laughs> You're getting your bathing suit on thinking OK here we go. Here's Tommy Pham. Pham ended the first inning with a ground ball to belt. Swing and a tapper foul. And it's no balls in one strike. They were talking about uh, the pitch clock that is all over the minor leagues and is uh, quite possibly going to be put into effect at the major league level next year, where a pitcher has 14 seconds with nobody on base to get rid of the ball. Hitter, batter's got to get in the box. Before those 14 seconds, and when they're in the stretch, it's a little bit different. It goes to 19 seconds. But I bring it up because earlier this week, Eugene, the Eugene Emeralds, the High A affiliate for the Giants, played a doubleheader. Now, doubleheaders in minor leagues are seven inning doubleheaders. Combined time for both games, combined time was under three hours. The first game was an hour and 12 minutes long. Well, the combination of that and well pitched games. Yeah. Alex oh, Cobb not happy. Letting off some steam right there. He thought Andy Fletcher was a little too tight. And he is. I mean, he's a tight umpire. One thing about Fletcher is that he's consistent. This is definitely one that Cobb could have gotten. It would have been a pitcher strike. It hit the box. Yeah, but you can't let that pitch that you didn't get affect the next one you're about to throw. And anger just it, it, it affects your release. You, you you throw it too hard. In an overthrow, you lose velocity, you lose location, you lose movement. You get mad, but get over it. Swing and a foul. So three and two. And keep an eye on Solano to see if David Bell sends him. On the ground to Longoria. That's one. That's two. And that'll end the inning. Casale's going to lead things off. Two nothing Reds. Every single day of his career. Yeah, did he ever? Here's Casale. Casale takes high and wide. One thing about a guy who's got natural cut, like Ashcraft has, and his fastball will have a little three-inch slide that moves away from a right-handed hitter. Once you see it, you have to you have to have a plan to try and hit it. You can't just go up there, see ball, and try and well. And I think the best approach to have against a, a, a high velocity cut like he features for a right handed hitter is think the opposite way. You get long with with that type of velocity that type of movement I mean, you're not going to see anything close to the sweet spot. Two balls and one strike. And that's what Ashcraft wanted. 
really hasn't thrown many breaker balls, and it's a pretty good breaker ball. There's a strike, two and two. Here's the 2 2 to Casale. And Casale holds up 3 and 2. That's Bill Welke. To Tommy Lastella, who's on deck. We're in the Giants' half of the third inning. Happy, happy birthday. Yeah, happy 89th. Vasali spoils another pitch. It stays at three and two. Put up a fight. Plus, getting a lot of pitches now out of Ashcraft. Not many guys have been able to do that the first time through the lineup. Line drive, base hit for Casale. Fans going to cut it off. It'll be a leadoff single, and that'll bring up the top of the order. Great at that. 3 2 and wants to throw a strike with it. A little breaking ball lays it up there a little bit high above the knee middle end. Boom! That's quality of bat. You get that many pitches out of a pitcher, you want to put yourself on base by way of a base hit. That's as good as it gets. Here's Listella who rolled out to India at second. Foul. Gives you an idea about Lestella and how quick he is. I mean, that's 97 in. A ball dude down there. Henry Will Shusen. On the ground to second. This could be a pair. And everybody safe. India with a wide throw. Well, they're going to look at that one at second base. The Reds are not convinced that he didn't get a piece of the bag. Has all the time, just a low below the belt slink, takes Fulmer off the base. I really couldn't tell if he caught a piece of the base. Well, they're going to look at it. Right here is their best. Yeah, I think he's out. I think he caught it originally with the left foot and then maybe with the right going by. Cincinnati's challenging the safe call at second base. All right, let's take a look. That's not the best look. The best look is from. Yeah, I I think he he didn't get it with the right going by, but I think he was on right there. Yeah, I think his heel and his his left heel and his right toe got it. I think they got him. After review, the call is overturned. The runner is out. Cincinnati retains their challenge. Here's Yastrzemski with one out and Listella at first.
Jastrzemski struck out and he takes high and wide one and zero. Oh. Stella not much of a threat to try and steal a base. Cued off the end of the bat. That's one. And Yaz beats out the re the the relay. Well, become part of this uh, the season ticket family of the Giants for as low as 500 bucks. You can start your own flex ticket account. Use your account credit to pick up your seat location and number of tickets for any game. Get more info, go to sfgiants.com slash flex. Good job. Meanwhile, she's got her glove, her big fist. Still on her first beer. But we know one thing, it's still cold. Thank you, big fist. Here's Ruff. Ruff off the end of the bat foul. And it's 0 and 1. Yeah, that'd be a fun place to be right yeah. now. Let's go, Grandpa. Right there is Solano. And that'll end the inning. Lead off hit wasted. Fourth inning coming up. <laughs> That's true. Here's Joey Votto. Excellent point. Votto with a half swing and it's no balls and one strike. Now nah, neither one of us would ever change the channel. No, that's true. Pinocchio. <laughs> it's growing. It's longer than Joey Votto's bat. Here's the 0 1 pitch coming up to Joey Votto. And Votto slices it foul and out of play. It's nothing in two. So, you know, when a hitter does that, he's thinking he should have really dumped something with, with that pitch he just thrown. That reaction ticks off a pitcher. And Alex Cobb going to back off the mound and think about it a little bit. I mean, you don't see 10 year veterans usually have a reaction like that. Well, what does he do? He pokes the next one into left field. And the leadoff hitter is aboard for Kyle Farmer. All right, let's take a look at the previous pitch and the reaction from Joey Votto when he missed this pitch. <laughs> it's like, Joey. Lighten up, Joe. Lighten up. But he was trying to go to left. Didn't execute it. Next pitch he does, and here he's on base to lead off an inning. Farmer with an infield hit in the second. And he takes a strike. Two nothing Reds here in the fourth inning. Farmer goes around. Yes, he does. And it's nothing in two. It's the thing about Alex Cobb. Every pitch that he has to throw has downward movement. Every pitch can get a ground ball. Not like he's just relying on his sinker. That slider, that split, they all get ground balls. Which is, if you're an infielder playing behind him, you got to love that. You're going to get some action. And he goes around. One out. That's about as bad at bat as he's had all year. I mean, he had two check swings. And what causes that is late movement. And Cobb has that. But those are the type of at bats that make a big league hitter talk to himself. I mean, that's not even an emergency swing. I don't even know what you call that. Stockus with a double to knock in a run as he takes low. <laughs> 
foul. One oh. ball and one strike. A ball dude down there, Henry Wilshire's, and could have been somebody on that play. Apologize to Jack Peterson. It's one and one. Center field, it looks like it's in the park. Good strong throw. All right. Now, how about a brief message presented by Pacifico? Pacifico is a crisp golden lager. Brewed for those who know, it's what's behind a label that matters. Two outs. Here's Elmora Jr. Swinging a foul off of Casale. No balls in one strike. There you go. Hey, I'm here. I bet you'd like to throw to that guy. I would have loved to have thrown to Buster Posey. You better believe it. There are certain catchers that just have the gift to be able to relax when they receive a pitch, and when that happens, it relaxes the guy on the mound. How about relaxed when they call a pitch? There's a strike. I was pretty lucky. I, I threw to some really great catchers. My all time favorite, Bob Brindley. Tapper foul, nothing in two. Tim Blackwell, great catcher. Bob Melvin was a great catcher. Terry Kennedy was a great catcher. What about Nikki? Steve Nikosha was a great catcher. He was pretty soft behind the dish. Jody Davis, George Bitterwald, Dave Roberts. Walton charges and throws and after the leadoff single a nice inning for Alex Cobb the National League. Thirty three percent of Jock Peterson's hits leave the yard. He was thrown out by Farmer on a nice play in the second. And here he takes high. Belt to follow. And that'll be foul down the left field line. Two runs on five hits for the Reds, no runs on two hits for the Giants. Hey, who got the ball? I think whoever got it, I think, was out of the picture. Just hope they're not laying on the aisle there yeah. waiting for an ice bag. I think so. I think somebody got dinged. Oh, she got it. There we go. We're yep. good. But in the process, somebody got dinged. One and two. Two and two. There's belt. Got him. Slider. Well, Sunday, July 2nd. Well, it's a day game, but it'll have a late night feel. The first 20,000 fans that day will receive a Lamont Wade Jr. bobblehead. Presented by Bank of America, Giants in, in the White Sox, SFGiants.com slash promotion for tickets. 
Lamont Wade Jr. still rehabbing down in Sacramento. Anxious to see him again. I miss him. Yeah, he makes the lineup a lot better. Belt struck out in the second. There's a strike. Infield play to pull, outfield play him away. The plan for Lamont Wade Jr. tonight for Sacramento was he's going to play seven innings. So far tonight, he's 0 for 2 with a walk. But he's been heating up. He's been swinging the bat well here the last several days. Here's the one two to belt. And it's high. Graham Ashcraft for the Reds. I mean, we've seen 99, 100 mile an hour fastballs. He's not the hardest thrower in the rotation, like, and not even close. Hunter Green, who pitched last night against the Dodgers, would hold that distinction. Well, he's doing tonight what he did against the Giants in Cincinnati. And he gets belt for the second time. That's five strikeouts. All have been swing and miss strike threes. Start to use that slider a little more the second time through the lineup. That comes by way of the back door, and that is perfect location. Longoria's got one of the two hits for the Giants. There you see the start that he had May 27th in Cincinnati. Giants could not score on him. He gave up just four hits, walked a couple, his first. Big league win. There's a strike. High down the right field line, it's into that corner and it's out of play. Longoria falls behind 0 and 2. One and two. Yeah, you know, the other thing too is I mean we're seeing high velocity from Ashcraft and you know he's not Maximizing, maximizing his effort to, to to add that velocity. It's pretty easy out of his arm. Center field. Hit well. It is out of here. Longoria with his sixth of the year. The Giants are on the board. And he's heating up. First hit tonight, a single the other way. This one he takes on center field with a two strike count. One thing about throwing 99 miles per hour, when a guy barrels you up, you're supplying the power. And not an overswing either. A little hanging slider at 90. Talk about all the breaking balls that Ashcraft has gone through this second time through the lineup. This one he gets burned on. Number six for Longoria. Here's Crawford. Crawford takes the line, almost got hit again. Felt pretty good for Longoria. Crawford takes low. It's two and zero. Oh. 323 home runs now 
career for Longoria. And the thing that's great about him is when he hits a home run, he smiles. Yeah. I mean, he really enjoys it. He is not too cool to 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 smile. I love that. Well, I don't know how long he wants to play, but he's got a shot for certainly 350, maybe 400. Yeah. Stays in good shape. I mean, he's still terrific defensively. Crawford hits a slow roller to India, and that'll do it. Giants on the board. As Longoria hits his sixth. And it's bye bye, baby. Drop the hit. Nixon Zell with an RBI double, which is the difference in the game right now, is he came up with a double in the second inning. And a strike, and it's 0 1. You know, it's amazing how a team is struggling against a pitcher and you're facing it, you're down 2 nothing. All of a sudden, the guy runs into one, makes it a 2 1 ball game, and that that pumps you up when it you're does. out there on the mound. You think, okay, let me get him back in, let me get him a shutdown inning. I used to try to do it for you all the time. And warning track power. <laughs> I'll, I'll help you out, Mikey. I'll come up with an infield hitter too. And and you did. Plus you picked a clean behind me. I appreciate that. No, not all the time. Foul, two and two. But my favorite time of the year watching you was when we had the father daughter son's wiffle ball game at the ballpark, and, and you were the pitcher. You were the best. Every kid up there, I mean, you could hit their bat. I don't care if they were two foot three or <laughs> yeah. six foot eight. Because they had to good, good practice at home as this has bounced the belt. Now, catcher's interference. Because Sally's not buying it. And I, I, he may have an argument. And I don't know if this is reviewable or not. And I think that's exactly what Gabe Kapler is coming out to take a look at. Catcher's interference is a reviewable play. The only time when it's not is if there's a squeeze play or a steal at home. You know, I. It could be that he heard something, and the problem with Casale's glove is he's got a lot of long leather on his glove. Yeah. I... I mean, the glove never really moved. Usually, when you make contact, the glove will move in some well, way. Watch Zin the long leather. Zinzel motioned right away that he hit something. I mean, that's catcher's interference, but that's an error for a catcher. Yeah. Well, it forces more critical pitches for Alex Cobb. And there's a strike. In tight, that one got away. That last pitch, number 70 for Alex Cobb. Pitching for a ground ball here. Kind of interesting, the two Redheads are not Reds fans. Yeah, that's odd. Two and one. 
Have you tried that caramel corn? I want the regular popcorn. Well, if I'm going to get the calories, then I can have two bags of popcorn to that one. Ten <laughs> bags of popcorn <laughs> to that one. Lined in the center field, it's right at Yastrzemski, who comes in and he makes the catch. But I will say this: the first bite of that caramel corn is yeah. an amazing experience. Yep, yep, yep. I would agree with you. It is also better than pine tar. A little bit. Well, I guess that's why you eat it with a fork. Oh yeah. Because you can't get it off your finger. No, it'll be there for a week. It's a veteran right there. It also, I think, cleans your teeth too. Well, and it takes the enamel off it too. I mean, it's sticky stuff. India takes down low. India's not an easy guy to double up. He's grounded into one double play this year. Yep. Two and zero. Oh. There are some people that take Orange Friday very serious. Oh well, yeah. She does. Donovan Solano on deck. The count is three and zero. Oh. There are some people. I like the helmet. Oh yeah, that's his uni. It's not the first time he's worn that. Or is in a strike. It's three and one. And the walk. Here comes Andrew Bailey. Well, I mean, right now he's just going to come down and try and calm down the veteran. And Alex Cobb can run hot. All right, now a brief message from Lazy Boy. White and blue sale. Save up to 30% off store wide. Lazy Boy. Live life comfortably. So Andrew Bailey will depart. The hitter is Donovan Solano. Look at a good game in San Diego. The Phillies and Padres, nothing, nothing in the sixth inning. See the Dodgers took care of the Braves tonight. Solano is struck out and then he was hit by a pitch in the third. Activity now. John Brebbia, the right hander, Jake McGee, the lefty. Red alert. Is pitch number 79 coming up. And the runner's going to go, and they have it stolen. And Solano knew it, and he took it. Well, think back on the first pitch of this game, or this at bat. Cobb throws a fastball in the outside corner, and he wanted it. He was upset by it. And. You lose your concentration to little things like varying the looks that you give second base. If you get predictable, you look one time, turn your head, and they go. I mean, they had about a four step jump. No way Casale had a chance to throw anybody out, and he did the smart thing. He ate it. On the ground to Crawford. He's coming home in the dirt, not in time. And Zenzel scores. Remember, we talked about his speed. You just take 
Brandon Crawford's arm for granted. He just not only is it a, a great arm, but it's an accurate arm. Rare to see him make a an errant throw, especially to home. And even if Casale comes up with this clean, cleanly, he's not going to have a chance to put a tag on. So it's three to one. When it's time for a change, think speedy. Oil change and auto service. You're trusted. Abrevia, 33rd time he's come in. 3 1 on the year with a 273 ERA. He's had a great first half. For Brebbia, who is 31 years of age, in his fifth year at the big league level, getting close to the sixth. He's going to come at you with a fastball slider and a changeup. Here's Tommy Pham. Runners at the corners. And a breaking ball for a strike. Fam's last at bat was a double play, and that's what the Giants would love to see right here. Another and two. Perfect slider. That location, I mean, you either swing and miss or you hit it on the ground. Way outside, one and two. Five hits for the Reds, and they haven't had a hit this inning. Two and two. Well, I started off with a catcher's interference, then a walk, and then an error, and now the Reds have a, a chance to really stretch this out. It's a big point in this ball game right here, and it's all in the hands of John Brevia. Got him. That was one out. That's what he was pitching for. He was pitching for the ground ball early, and then when he got to the two strike count, he goes up above the hands. High fastball, and Pham cannot hold up. That's a big, big out. Here's Votto, who had an opposite field base hit in the fourth inning. India at third. Solano. Is at first. And it's outside. One ball and no strikes. Top of the fifth inning. Donovan Walton in shallow right field. In tight 2 0. He's got an open base here. And right hander hitter Kyle Farmer on deck. And the way he's going out of here with these first two fastballs looks like he didn't want any part of them. But hey, I mean, that's just right to use that base. There's a strike. Yeah. You know, all those years, Brebbia with the Cardinals in the same division with the Reds, and Votto coming into this at bat is 0 for 1. Most RBIs by Canadian players Walker, Votto, Morneau. 3 and 1. And the overshift for Votto. Mm -hmm. 
Prado who takes historically a lot of walks takes one here. And uh, Previa takes advantage of that open base. Farmer had a base hit to deep short in the second. One ball and no strikes. And now this 1 0 pitch becomes a big pitch. Line drive, side retired. Farmer can't do any better than that. It finds a glove. Giants trail by. I don't know, but he started dyeing his beard. Unbelievable. What? He's dying it gray? I know. He, he just, <laughs> last time I saw it, it was all gray. Uh, just kidding, Jeff. I thought only the announcers were getting old. Yeah, that, that too. Donovan Walton takes down low. Two Donovans in this game. One ball and one strike. So Graham Ashcraft back to a two run lead. Mike, when you and I played, there might be one hitter on each team that you would play to pull. That's true. Now, everybody is a pull hitter. Hit right into the defense. You know, I'll tell you how far the game has come. You know, we used to make a big deal when a shift got put on. We make a point of mentioning it, and and we show it on TV, and blah 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 blah. Now it's a big deal when they play normal. Normal. <laughs> You're right. I mean, that might go away next year, too. Well, the, the proposed new rule change would mean that you'd have to have two players on either side of second base. You couldn't put three players like they have now on one side of the infield. And also, one foot on the dirt. Hey, you can't get out the grass anymore. <laughs> If that rule goes into effect, I mean, Brandon Belt's going to have a party. Yeah, I agree. I remember the very first time that I had to play way out on the grass it was John Mayberry of the Kansas City Royals. Later on, he played for Toronto. And it was the oddest feeling. Especially on turf in Kansas City. Caselli with a line drive hit in the third inning. And then the other one where there was a right handed overshift was Lee May. And that, that was you, worse. That put you on the left. Yeah, on the third. Now I'm playing short, and there's a reason why I'm a second baseman. <laughs> India. Speak. Not a problem. Speaking of second baseman making a play on the shortstop side. Here's La Stella. Right on, right on cue. But the shifts work. I mean, that's the thing. You can sit there and say, well, I, you know, I, I don't like it. Well, wait a second. Look at these numbers. The shifts work. I heard something the other day, Mike, and I don't know how far back they went, but last year there were 5,000 fewer hits than like 10. 10 years ago. 5,000. Wow. Uh, if they 5,000. They make these rule changes, uh, I think you'll start to see it swing back the other way. There's a breaking ball for a strike. I mean, that's a lot of hits. 5,000. McGee back up for a second hump.
Good fastball. But inside, and where are we pitch wise? At 71. So Ashcraft is doing a good job. But you point you make about the 5,000, it tells you right there that the shifts are working. Well, that was my point. I was trying to help you out. Thank you. Please drive home safely. One and two. It used to be the job of the guy who's going to pitch tomorrow. I can't remember the last time I saw a guy with a chart. <laughs> Somehow I think they're charting something else. Uh, I think he's charting foul balls in the dugout. He is. Tapper. Farmer makes the play in a nice inning for Graham at the oil change and auto service. Your trusted oil change tune up in break experts. Here's Jake McGee. Coming in for the 22nd time this year, one and two on the year. For McGee, you're going to see a lot of fastballs, and when he's right, you're going to see a lot of fastballs across the letters. Also has a slider. Like that. Hook that one foul. One ball and one strike. Mustakas with an RBI double against Alex Cobb in the second inning. Shoots this one the other way. Ruff is on the move. He can't get it. And it bounces up against the wall. And Moustakis is going to put on the brakes. Ruff with a terrific effort. Well, they are also playing Moustakis off the line of left field. Set defense really did not allow Ruff a great opportunity to catch this ball. Plus, that ball was slicing away from him. So, a leadoff double, and McGee now is a face strikeout situation here with Rur at second base. Nobody out. Here's Almora, that's hit number six for the Reds. And Almora takes. Low. On the ground, that'll do the job. As Walton will make the play, Mustak is the third. Yeah, nice situation with that. Productive out. <laughs> So here's Zenzel. Zenzel reached on catcher's interference and eventually scored in the fifth. Giants play the infield in. Strike on the inside corner. The stock is over third base. I mean, he, he's average speed at best. I don't know if he's going to go on contact with one out. On two.
look out. Do not get hit in an 0-2 pitch. Yeah. McGee moves Unzel's feet. It's one and two. Padres have taken a one nothing lead on the Phillies that game in the bottom of the seventh. Zenzel not chasing it's two and two. Really does have two pitches to go out of the strike zone if he wants to. With the hopes that Zenzel will chase a pitch. It is a pitcher's pitch. Does not have to give it to him. He wants to strike out. Line drive, rough coming in. He plays it on a hop. It's four to one. So a nice two strike at bat for Sinzel. Sunzel every at bat has produced a run. Garcia is one for two. It's hit number seven for the Reds. The Giants are just three. Longoria's got two of the three. I think about McGee. I mean, you're going to label what type of pitcher he is. You say he's a fly ball strikeout guy. His best bat for a, a ground ball is that slider. Your pitcher, your best fastball is one across the letters. They don't get a lot of ground balls off the letters. Knee high gets the ground balls. And his best knee high pitch is the slider. The one one is a strike to make it one and two. Of the order, Jonathan India on deck. This pop up is out of play. It's right where we wanted to put that 97 mile an hour heater right across the letters. You see it? Did well to fight it off. I mean, he's in a two strike mode here. He's got to expand a little bit. And that high fastball is not an easy one to keep that top hand on. Keep climbing that ladder. He could back foot him with a slider. Nice play, Casale. Two and two. Keep that double play in order, and that's what Casale just did. Now this becomes a big pitch. He doesn't want to get into a three-two situation with him, especially with a good speed at first base. In all likelihood, with one out and three two counts, Sinzel would be taken off. He wants to get him right here. Got him. Here's India. So they set on the inside corner winds up being a pretty good mistake the location he gets it to swing right through the outside fastball. Now 
this really is a steel situation. Only because if Sinzel is successful, he's in scoring position. If not, well, then the Reds would lead off with their leadoff hitter, Jonathan Indy, at the top of the seventh. Soft toss. And almost on cue, a throw over to first base so you could kind of get a feel of what is going on in the mind of Gabe Kapler. He called that throw over. Sinzel is. Three successful steals. He's been thrown out twice, but still, he's good speed. If you don't pay attention to him, he'll go. Here's a strike. So, McGee, the third pitcher for the Giants. Cobb, Brebia, McGee here in the sixth. Oh, and two. Should India reach, then it would be Donovan Solano. And that's going to roll foul, so we'll reset and do it again. Break the ball in 0 2 count, broke him down. He brought his glove. Yeah, he's ready. Yeah, he is. This is a player. He's protecting his mom. It's his job. That'll never stop. This is the 20th pitch of the inning for McGee. And he skies this one into shallow center field. Who's got it? It's Yastrzemski side retired. The damage is a run. Giants are coming up. They trail by three. Pierce captured the title. Yeah, he hadn't slept. Yastrzemski, 0 for 2. Bounces this one to India. One out. Pitch count still not an issue for Ashcraft. Next pitch will be number 75. You know, really, and that, when you have a guy who's got stuff like Ashcraft, like a lot of guys don't want to get deep in the count. They want to get after it early. And when that happens, the pitch count stays low. Here's Ruff who looks at a strike. Ruff is struck out and he's rolled out to third. Right now the Giants would love to get a base runner for Jock Peterson who's on deck. Strike one and two. Twenty four year old right hander Graham Ashcraft has really tied the Giants up at knots a second time. Remember, he had his, an outing in Cincinnati, had his first big league win with six and a third shutout innings. They only got four hits off of them. And tonight, here with one out of the six, they've only had three hits. Two have come off the bat of Evan Longoria. Single and a home run. Well, you mentioned earlier, Mike, the team ERA is 5-3-8. Ashcraft's is 3-5-1. He has been in command of this game. Got him. Strikeout number six, and they're all swinging the strike threes. I make a point of that because 
Swing and miss strike threes. I mean, you earn those. I mean, you could get a cheap strikeout by a ball that's six, seven inches off the plate, and umpire calls strike up for you. But there's no there's no mystery about six strikeouts, and all six strikeouts are swing and miss. That's what I used to love about Tim Linscum. I mean, all his strikeouts always seem to be swing and miss strike threes. Peterson hits a high fly ball in the park to center field. And that'll end the inning. A one, two, three inning for Ashcraft with eight pitches. Seventh inning coming up. Tune up and break experts. Young man just activated today, brought up today. It's Junior Marte. And uh, this is what he did earlier in the season when he came up to the Giants. He had one outing that really jacked up his earned run average, but he throws hard. And it'll be Donovan Solano who's going to hit. Solano picked up an RBI and a fielder's choice in the fifth. It's four to one. Cincinnati. And it's outside for a ball one and oh. Remember tomorrow's game is 415. So come on out. Should be a nice day. So turn on at 330. Chance pregame show. Marte's got three pitches, high velocity, fastball, slider, and changeup. There's a strike. Tells you what pitch he's going to throw if he needs to throw a strike. Jam shot to second. If you and every once in a while you're reminded that if you want to get out of the hot weather in the East Bay come out out over here for some air conditioning Yeah, the air conditioning is working fine over here at third and King. Here's Tommy Pham who's 0 for 3. The most noise the Giants have made in this game have been on Longoria's home run and the three at bats against Tommy Pham. <laughs> That's true. And again, he needs to throw a strike. He throws the breaking ball. Crawford takes the sharp ground ball. Two down. That's the thing too about Peter Marte is it. He's got high velocity on that fastball, but it's got movement where he gets a lot of ground balls. Such an asset. When you're a bullpenner, if you can get a strikeout and if you can get a ground ball, you're going to make it. You're going to have a good. You're going to have a good career. There's everybody wants those guys. Here's Joey Votto. Mato's been on base twice. One ball and no strikes. There's a strike and a breaking ball to even the count. The batting stance guy has a field day with Joey Vaughn. Oh, he really does. <laughs> He's got all the mannerisms. He's trying to go to left again. 
I mean, I, I look forward forward to the batting stance guy yeah. on Twitter. If you haven't seen him, check him out. The batting stance guy. He's good. Got him. Marte with a nice inning. Giants need some offensive action. It's four to one Reds. Belt has struck out twice. And he fouls this one out of play as he gets a high fastball. No balls and one strike. Longoria and then Crawford. Swing. You're going to miss. Nothing in two. This has been a tough matchup for Belt. Rare that you see a young pitcher have ownage on Brandon Belt. And it's happened here tonight. He's got two strikeouts and he's sitting on an 0 2 count here against Ashcraft. Almost a thing of beauty, but it's foul. <laughs> It made a noise off the bat, but I, I wasn't familiar with it yet. Yeah, our ball dude, Louis Berlin, making some friends. Had a baby, Lou. I mean, it's, it's the beast. Got him. That's a hat trick for Belt. Here's Longoria. Yeah, this is back in the fourth inning when he hit a home run, a hanging 90 mile an hour slider out over the plate, and he takes it over the wall in center field. Home run number six on the year for Belt. And that has been the offense for the Giants tonight. He has two hits tonight. The Giants have three total. But both of his at bats have been impressive. The single and opposite field P rod to right field. Back of the second inning. Here's the 1 0, and Longoria takes outside for a ball. Two balls and no strikes. A little fastball cut that he has, and the high velocity has really been the pitch that has been so problematic for the Giants tonight. They just haven't been able to figure out. A way to beat it. Giving ground at third is Donovan Solano, and he makes a nice play. Well, it's summertime, and that means the Summer Sunday crew is on the scene. You can join the before and after every Sunday Giants game all summer long on NBC Sports Bay Area. The four knuckleheads. Well, one for sure. Here's Crawford. Crawford hit by a pitch in the second, then he bounced out to second. Outside. It'll be interesting to see how far David Bell lets Ashcraft go. This next pitch is number 90. Out of play. One ball and one strike. Reds really have a couple of their big relievers on the shelf on the injured list right now. So, I mean, I don't know if they're, this is going to be his last inning, pitch count wise. And he really hasn't had much stress. And, it, and you, know, you throw a fastball. A lot of guys we throw cutters. They alter their. Their arm stroke to get cut. He doesn't. It. It's just a fastball stroke. Very much like Mariano Rivera. I mean, it's just a natural gift. So point being it doesn't take a lot out of his arm and he hasn't had a lot of stress. Haven't had a lot of. Been on base. Well he hasn't been in the stretch since the third inning. 
And he gets Crawford for strikeout number eight. Through seven here at Oracle Park. It's four to one Cincinnati. So here's Farmer. Farmer takes a strike. He's one for three. He had a good at bat in the fifth with the bases loaded. But they lined out to Longoria to end the inning. Longoria again on the run. Not a problem. Not a problem. It's about as relaxed as you could possibly be out on the field. In the batter's box, playing third. Stylish player, always has been. This is a guy that has hurt the Giants tonight. Yeah, Mustakas, a couple of doubles. RBI scored a couple runs. It's an easy 99, and it's no balls and one strike. Uh, Alex Cobb really deserved a better fate. We've said that a few times with him out there this year. Foul back. No, they get two. It's so common now to see a guy throw 99. Yeah. I mean, I remember going into Miami when Rob Nen was with the Marlins and they had a radar gun, and not every park did. Swing and a miss. He got him. And everybody was like, check the radar gun with this young guy, Rob Nen. And it was 99. 100. Well, and none of that, he threw it. A breaking ball 92 93 miles per hour. I mean that was what we had never seen. It wasn't a slider either. <laughs> I mean he was nasty. He'd go into Houston when they had Craig Biggio and Jeff Bagwell and he'd school them. Yep. And not many pitchers were schooling those guys. There's a call strike to Albert Elmora Jr. Some captain fans. Longoria again. Seven pitches. Now the Giants' offense needs to get going. It's four to one. This is Montara. It's Christmas time. Flores hitting 241. I really didn't tell the story about Wilmer Flores. He will give you a good at bat. Well, and he's also got a good opposite field approach, which I think if you're right handed, you've, you've got to employ here against Ashcraft. And a base hit for Flores. Or you could go back up the middle. And that breaks a string of 10 consecutive outs from Ashcraft. So here's Casale. Casale is one for two. Giants got their leadoff hitter on in the third, and it was Casale who did it. And that's the only time in this game. In the hole. And the Giants with back to back hits here in the eighth inning. Boy, just like that, bang, bang, they're going to get the tie and run to step in that batter's box. So Derek Johnson is going to come out. Well, and. Joel Kunal is going to get ready to go. And that's all Derek Johnson is going to try and do is just stall and get a little time for his man in the pin. Well, 
David Bell's going to let this kid try to work it out himself. So good for him. And Tommy Listella is going to be the hitter. And the bottom of the lineup has set it up for the top of the lineup. Rare that a big league hitter gets four bats against the same pitcher anymore. Boy, is that a fact? And Tommy Listella is going to get that opportunity right now against Graham Ashcraft. Ball and no strikes. The leash is getting real short right now for Ashcraft. Well, Stella has hit the ball on the ground three times. There you see the defense. Two and zero. Oh. That close. Well, now if you're Listella, you lay in the weeds for something you like. And that would be something middle in. And that's exactly where he was looking. That ball cut, took out the outside corner. Well, not corner, but at the outer half of the plate. When you're looking middle in, you're opening up and you're, you're looking to get greedy. You want something <laughs> on that inside corner. And a possible double play ball. That's one and two. Four ground balls hit by Listella. This one ends up being a double play. Boy, that is a punch in the stomach. And there's a fastball. You think, well, man, that's right there, a great place to hit, but it had a three inch movement. And it produces a ground ball right back to Ashcraft, who throws a perfect strike to start the double play, and they get the deuce. Ouch. Here's Mike Yastrzemski. He's 0 for 3. Well, the double play hurt the Giants on this past road trip, but they avoided it tonight until just now. Outside to Yastrzemski. Giants are have to put this together with two outs. Little jam shot and it's going to fall. It's four to two. Yastrzemski does the job. He gets a run in, and once again, the Giants get the tie and run in the batter's box. And he digs this one out. I mean, this is exactly where Ashcraft wanted to throw that fastball. I mean, it was right on the hands inside corner. He didn't get great wood on it, but he got enough. I watch the location. I mean, that's just right where he wants to throw it at 97. Ruff is 0 for 3. Center field. Side retired. That is where you want to have the opposition hit the ball. 4-2. Got two RBIs in this game. And he scored a run. Yeah, he's had a nice night. Two guys with low batting averages, Mustakas and Zenzel, have really hurt the Giants tonight. Pop up. 
to Belk. Belk avoids the bag and makes the catch. One out, and here's Garcia. That much of a problem for an infielder missing a bag on a pop up? Yeah, you know what? You have to be aware of where it's at. Because the last thing you want to do is make the the reel that they show on the scoreboard <laughs> of guys the blooper film tripping and falling and yeah the blooper reel look out so Garcia hit by pitch he had retired seven in a row and until this fastball it just Keats seeks right into Gar Garcia. He had nowhere to go. I said throw at that angle. You just start to think it's coming every time. Yeah, I mean he's got a little velocity behind it too. Here's India. The breaking ball. Hunter Strickland. Who? Ready? Yeah, that's right. Former Giant, Hunter Strickland. Giant so, fans will remember. Is that the same guy? It is. Longoria. Flores. Belt. India. Too much speed. Two down. This was the play though and when a guy would get drilled by a fastball and then there was a. A ground ball left side of the infield that guy at first base was going in to try and take that second baseman and no. knock him into the bleachers. That never happened. <laughs> oh my goodness. What. Really set it up Mike is if there was a guy on first already. So now the first base is not holding on Don Baylor. Or Bill Madlock. Which means they can get as big a lead as you want, and they you are a sitting duck at second. Light you up. Here's Solano with two outs. And a strike. And it's no balls in one strike. That's a live 98. Perfect location with sink. And that's what you want to do with. Donovan Solano, you want to keep the ball down. In the dirt, it's one ball and one strike. Padres end up winning that game against the Phillies, one nothing. Two balls and a strike. Tapped foul. You know the 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 note in that game in Philadelphia or in uh, San Diego against the Phillies and the Padres. Aaron Nolan was on the hill for the Phillies. He was the losing pitcher. The guy that got the hit that knocked in the only run of the game. His brother Austin Nolan, the catcher for the Padres. Rough Thanksgiving. Yeah, that's a rough Thanksgiving table. That, that's that's going to have to come up in the conversation. Longoria will go the short way and we'll head to the bottom of the ninth. Giants need two to tie and three to go home. It's 4 2 Cincinnati. Reds will be a former Giant. Hunter Strickland. Take a look at what he has done this year 26 appearances. 
He's got two saves and two save opportunities as I mentioned the, the normal closer for the Reds on the in, injured list so Strickland pick it up the slack. Still throwing hard mid to high 90s with the fastball. So four and two seam it and he's got a slider. And an occasional change up. And it'll be Jock Peterson to lead things off. Peterson lifetime three for nine against Strickland with a couple of home runs. A home run here. Well, it does the Giants some good, but what they need is a base runner. Strickland, 33 years of age, in his seventh year at the big league level. And the first pitch is down low. The first five hitters for the Giants, they've had one hit. Peterson pops it up over is Solano and it's out of play. Gives you an idea just how good Graham Ashcraft was tonight. Handcuff at the top of the Giants lineup. Just one hit out of the top five guys. One for 18. That's how good he was. And that hit just happened in the eighth to knock in the only or knock in the second run. One and one to Peterson. High drive to right, but it's in the park. One out. Off the end of the bat. Yeah, I kind of got deep by that one. Well, you get deep by his swing. He's kind of bring a belt. He's coming back to the Giants' dugout, thinking, "Man, I just missed it." Guys who just missed it, they have a tendency to take a very slow walk back to the dugout. And Peterson did. Belt. Belt's 0 for 3, and Ashcraft struck him out three times. To say, Mike, is belt goes, so go the Giants, and we're just waiting for him to get hot. Well, he has been streaky his whole career, and when he gets hot, I mean, that's when the home runs happen. They may come in bunches, and he can carry a club for a month. Foul back. There's a pitch to hit, and it's two and one. Big play. Any way they can get themselves on yeah. base, they set up the tie and run. That's going to drift into the seats. It's three and two. 
Ambrose glove. That's it. Center field for Senzel. Two down. And it's up to Longoria to try to get on base for Crawford. He has had a good night with a bat. Two for three, a single, a solo shot. Even the ground ball he hit for an out was hit on the button. Down low. One ball and no strikes. To Longoria, a single, a home run. Two for three and the 1 0. Way outside, two balls and no strikes. A bit of an overthrow on the 2 0 count. The one thing that Hunter Stripper does not want to do is walk Longoria and set up the time run. And you know this, this game means a little more to him than probably anybody else in that Reds team. You feel that way pitching against your former team. Four is in a strike. Out of play three and two. So this is what it's come down to. Yeah, and he's put the pressure on Longoria. You know he's got a two run lead, so Longoria hits the ball in the ballpark, he's still got a lead, so he knows he does not want to walk. He wants to make Longoria swing the bat. Three and two. And the walk. Back. And with that walk, there's a little bit of doubt in the mind of Strickland. And he knows that's a mistake. That's the last thing he wanted to do. Believer. Crawford 0 for 2. Longoria goes. So he's at second base. Nervous Garcia coming out to talk to Strickland. He knows how bad Strickland wants this. This is a simple. You're overthrowing it. Yeah. 
One ball and no strikes to Crawford. Well, that's not a strike. Simple. You're overthrowing it. One ball and no strikes to Crawford. Well, that's not a strike. It's one ball and one strike. And for Fletcher, who's had a pretty good night, I mean, he's been tight. And this one was definitely a pitcher strike. He was so tight at the outside corner at Alex Cobb. Eh? I know it frustrated Cobb. Tight strike zones will do that, but that last pitch was so far out of what he's called on my own. Unusual. And instead of a 2 0 count, you get a 1 1 count. It's a big call. One and two. Twenty nine thousand one hundred and seventy eight here tonight on a Friday night. Game one of a three game series. Got him and that's the ball game. Game one goes to the Reds behind a young man by the name of Graham Ashcraft who beats the Giants for the second time this year and in both games he pitched terrific. Well he really did. I mean he was in command and the, and the weapon that was uh, so potent in tonight's ball game for him was that high velocity cut fastball. It really really was something the Giants just couldn't figure it out. I mean the only guy who really had great at bats against it were two guys actually Casale. And uh, and Evan Longoria, but boy, the, uh, the top of the lineup just could not figure out Ashcraft, and it was the difference in the game. Yeah, the top of the lineup, one for 20, and uh, that's not going to do it. So the Reds take game one, and now the Giants will pin their hopes tomorrow on Logan Webb. Final score Reds four, Giants two. If you're watching us on KNTV, stay tuned on NBC Bay Area for local programming. And NBC Sports Bay Area, stay with us for Giants Post Game Live. Thanks for joining us, and as always, have a good night, everybody.